We are so pumped that you could join us for Bible Fellowship Online. For what I'm told, it's summer, right? Feels like it. We are kicking off the summer right. Alexis, how are we gonna kick off the summer right? We're gonna focus and take a closer look at what God has planned for our lives. Before we get to that, and before I get a little excited about it, I have to let you know about the best week of the summer. It's Adventure Week, and this year, you can be a part of it at the comfort of your own home, like I am, in my little cozy corner. Adventure Week is online, and you still have time to sign up. Alexis, where can I sign up? Prestowood.org slash Adventure Week. Prestowood.org slash Adventure Week. Anyway, it's a new month, and you know what that means. A new memory verse. This month, our verse comes from Hebrews 12, 2, and it says, let us keep looking to Jesus because he is the one who started this journey of faith and he is the one who completes the journey of faith. That's a good one to memorize. Why? Because it's all about faith. Now, to explain things a little better for you, I thought I'd share some trick shot videos with you. Let's go ahead and watch those. Come on. attempt some of those. You can see how it took a lot and a little faith just to try them. Just like those shots, we have to have faith in what we cannot see. Question is, what do trick shots have to do with faith? We all have to have faith in the things we cannot see. Like, how did that kid hit the target with his soccer ball even though he couldn't see it? That's faith. We have to keep looking to Jesus even though we can't see him. Now I can see what he did in the Bible and we can see him move in our lives today, but by reading and studying about Jesus, we can know that we serve a huge God, huge, even though and even when we can't actually see him. Now, that's faith. Now before Miss Holly comes to talk to us, let's stand up and worship together. This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it loud I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe And keep on Looking, looking, looking to you forever 
I'm going, going, you go there too. I'll keep on looking, keep on looking, keep on looking to you. I'll fix my, I'll fix my eyes. eyes on you. everyone's having a great day. I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about a very important subject in the Bible. But first, I have a question for you. What is something that you can't see, but you know it exists? Think about that for a second. And if I know you guys, I know you can come up with some pretty great examples. What about when you walk outside on a really windy day? You know that the wind is there, but can you actually see the wind? You can't. What about your mind that helps you think when you have to take a test or think about what to say when you're not sure? You know that your mind exists, but you can't see your mind, right? What about my basketball right here? You can see this and you know that when I drop this ball and I let it go, what's gonna happen? It's gonna fall down and hit the ground, right? Just like that because of something called gravity. We know that gravity exists, but we can't see it. Knowing and believing in something you can't see is called faith. And that is something that God calls us to do in his word, specifically in Hebrews chapter 11. Verse one says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. That just means faith is being sure that something exists as something is real, even when we can't see it, specifically God and his promises. And so Hebrews 11 lists a lot of people that we're going to look at today and how they chose faith, even when things were hard or when God was calling them to do something really big. I want to share one more verse with you, too, out of John chapter 20, verse 29. And this is Jesus talking to Thomas. Thomas was kind of having a hard time believing in things that he couldn't see and believing that Jesus had actually risen from the dead. And here's what Jesus said to him. Have you believed only because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. He's talking about you and me. He says we're blessed when we believe in him, even though we can't see him. Let's listen and see what Kellen has to say today about some of these people in Hebrews chapter 11 and how their faith can actually strengthen our faith. Check out this video. Now, we can't actually see God, not even with micro goggles, but we can see the stories of people in the past who put their faith in God. And I've got some special people to help me tell some of their stories. It's time for another edition of... Kids Perspective! The writer of the book of Hebrews reminds us of a guy named Abraham. What up? I'm Abraham. Well, actually, when God called Abraham, he was already pretty old. Oh. What up? I'm Abraham. Better. <laughs> Abraham and his wife, Sarah. I'm Sarah. 
with an H, in case you were wondering. Yeah, that's good to know. Even though they were old, they didn't have any kids. We ain't got no kids. But God told us to leave our home and go to a new land. He's promised us. Plus, he told us we would have kids. He promised. Look at us. We're old. We're like uh, cassette players or rotary phones. Didn't you hear what I said? I said he promised. Oh, then let's go. So they followed God and they had kids and grandkids and great-grandkids. We got kids now. Yeah, we do. Yes, they did. Just like God promised. God also promised Abraham that the whole world would be blessed because of Abraham's family. Abraham would not be alive to see the whole world being blessed, but he had faith that God would keep his promise. And now let's talk about one of Abraham's great, 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 great... Why not just say descendants? Yeah, that'd be easier. One of Abraham's descendants, Moses. Let my people go! Wait, before that, when Moses was a baby. Uh. Go, 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 go! He was rescued by his mother, who hid him in a basket on the banks of the Nile River. Whoa! Until he was found by Pharaoh's daughter. Aw, look at you, my sweet little... Mama! Baby? Yeah, so Moses was raised in the royal Egyptian family, even though he was actually an Israelite. The Israelites were slaves of the Egyptians. But one day, God spoke to Moses through a burning bush. I want you to bring the Israelites out of Egypt and into a land flowing with milk and honey. They are my people. As much as I love milk and honey, I'm not sure I'm the right guy for the job. I will be with you. Oh. All right, then. Moses chose to stand with his own people, God's people, and he led them to freedom from slavery. Oh, you can do it now. Oh. <clears throat> Let my people go! Beautiful. Thank you. The Israelites were free from slavery. And even though Moses didn't live to see the land flowing with milk and honey that God promised his people, Moses still had faith that God would keep his promise. Then there was David, who was anointed to be king of Israel. That's right, I'm anointed. What does anointed mean? It means you're not king yet. I'm still the king. So give me that crown. Oh, okay, here you go, King Saul. Thank you. <laughs> you're not getting this back. I'm going to be the king. And then my son will be king, and then my son's son will be king, and then my son's son son will be king, and then... Um, sorry, King Saul. God promised David he would be the next king. He, he promised? Ah, oh, man. Uh, thank you. David was the next king of Israel like God promised. And God promised that David's family would always have a king on the throne. And even though King David would not live to see the birth of his descendant, who would rule God's people forever, David had faith that God would keep his promise. These people, they lived thousands of years ago, and they didn't always see what God promised them. But God could see things they couldn't see. And guess what? We can see things they couldn't see. We know the whole world was blessed through Abraham's family because one of Abraham's descendants was Jesus. We know that the Israelites made it into the land flowing with milk and honey. Yes! Uh, I mean, <clears throat> praise God. And we know Jesus is also a descendant of King David. And even though we can't see forever, we can have faith that Jesus will always rule like a king because that's what God promised. The end. That was great, kids. Thank you so much for your help. Well, now that we know what faith is and just what it looked like in the life of Abraham, we can think about how God is calling you and me to faith this week. How is God calling you to deepen your faith in Him? 
Are you going through something hard and you just need to tell him that you believe that he's with you and he's walking with you, that you have faith in his promises from his word that says that he will be with you no matter what you go through? Is he calling you maybe to do something big or scary and you need to just tell him, I believe that you're with me and that you can help me do this and that you're in control. I believe, I have faith in you and in your promises. It's important to tell God that you believe in him and have faith in him. And if that's not something you've ever done, I wanna encourage you guys to do that today. Tell him, admit to him that you're a sinner and that you know you've done things wrong and that you know he died on the cross for you. You believe that he took your punishment on himself instead of you having to be punished and died, he did it for you. And confess that to him, tell him you believe and have faith in him. So important to do. And then the last thing I want you guys to do is look at John 20 verse 29, write it out on a note card or a piece of paper this week, put it by your bed or by your mirror and just let it be a reminder to you um, of exactly what Jesus said to Thomas and how you are blessed when you believe in God, even though you can't see him. Hope you guys have a great week.